Three years ago, it was all or nothing. Now the user has edit buttons. Now there are some basic permissions that can't be edited. Like if someone is asking for, like in Facebook, there are three things that you have to give you can't edit. Like uh, they are your public profile, which means uh, your uh, name, an age range. They will not give you a date of birth or your exact age. They'll give you an age range, your language and country. These are things you have to give. Your email address and list of friends. You can't edit this. Anything else other than this, uh, you have the option. Yeah, the user has the option. Plus the application for Facebook, if it wants anything else, if it wants only these three things, it doesn't need to go to Facebook for a review process. But if you want something more, Facebook will ask you to submit a review application. They will find out do you really want this stuff? Do you really need this? Why do you need this? Otherwise, anyone could make an application and get anything about anyone. Okay? Let's do it. I've already got the code open in the interest of time. Uh, let's do a Google example. Now, you can use libraries. There are libraries to do this stuff. That will make your life easier. But it's a fairly simple process. If you understand the, the brass tracks, the nitty gritties that we've already covered, it's fairly simple. And you know how to write a client uh, that makes HTTP requests. It's fairly simple, and I've uh, kind of done both, a mix and match of both. For the Google implementation, we'll do it by hand. For Facebook one, we'll use an SDK, just to contrast. So I will quickly, there's a home controller. This is an MVC app. And I've, again, this is not how I write code. Uh, this is, I've done it serially on purpose, for the purpose of demo, so you don't have to hop here and hop there and and it doesn't get in our way, okay? Uh, this is, I, I hate bad code and this is really bad code. I want to scream that out again and again, but anyway, let's just ignore it for now. So the first thing that happens is somebody, okay, I'll run this code once quickly before telling you what the code does. <clears throat> Change the direction. Uh, so we have this. We click this. I was already logged into Google. My email address is here. So it says Noble Cashier, which is another application I made, uh, wants to know your basic profile, blah, blah, blah. And then there's this button here. I can say, no, I don't want to give this. Um, depending on this one, I, have to, I, ha I can't do anything about this, but I can do something about these two. Anyway, I say, right now, I'll just say cancel. And it should give me an error. But if I said OK, so I get an error saying access denied. But if I said OK, it would show you stuff. So I'll go back and say OK again. And right now, I haven't done any beautification. It's just JSON. You get this data about the user. You get everything about him. I do this. I'm that. I have four URLs. This is my YouTube channel. OK? Uh, now let's look at the code. So the first thing, if you notice, the first thing that happened was I saw this URL. And this URL is what we're going to construct. And the way to construct it is So in the index, I just construct a URL. This is a URL you get from reading the Google documentation, that that's the URL of the resource server that you're going to send the user to. And then these are the parameters. See, client ID, redirect URI, which is where is the client going to come back? Where is the resource server going to come back to the client? The scope and the response type. Uh, the response type is fixed code and a state which is to prevent CSRF attacks. Now, these are extra parameters I don't want to talk about. At the moment, in the interest of time. Uh, so I include the client ID. I've put these variables here on the top. Client ID, client secret. Redirect URI is going to be a URI of our application, so I named uh, an action called Google Callback, which is here, which is going to get the callback. 
This is making sense to everyone? Okay. And the scope is a list of space delimited or com comma delimited list of reserved keywords that you have to read from the documentation. The documentation for every provider will tell you if you want email, type this word. If you want this, type that word. Okay. Now, um, so this redirect URI, URI needs to be told to our application. So I'll quickly go to, I'll copy this code. In fact, everything that I have right now is of noble catcher or something else. So I'll quickly go and uh, I'll type in, so I'll go and edit settings. I'll edit these settings and say that's the callback I want. That's the redirect URI that I want you to call back. Okay. Update this. And I'll go here and copy this client ID and paste it here. And the client secret. So Google verifies the redirect URI. Just one sec. Just one sec. I have very limited time. The clock is ticking. Um, and the redirect URI and this. Yeah. So the first thing is I just compose this and send it as a content, just as a string. Okay? And that displays this URI. Now when the user clicks this URI, he's going to go to those dialog boxes which you just saw. And then the control is going to come back here. Okay? Because the user is going to get redirected over here. The user is going to get redirected here. And what we would get is a query string that has the authorization code by the name code. So we pick the authorization code. And then, obviously, you'll make sure here if there wasn't any code, there was an error, so you'll check all that stuff. And then I make a request to exchange that authorization code for an access token. And that's, in the case of Google, it's only going to be a post request. Google doesn't allow a GET request in this case. So I construct the URL. That's the URL to which I'm going to send this request to. Uh, this is a post request. and I write it to the request buffer, and this is the request body, which includes client ID, client secret, the code, which I just got, redirect URI, which is the same URI, grant type is going to be a fixed authorization code, and state is anything. Okay? And so I send this request and get back an access token or an error. And if I have the access token, um, yeah, I get the access token. And if I have the access token, I call the actual resource server. This is the Google Plus API. Now, Google has several APIs. One more thing you have to do is, for your application, you have to tell it, which API would you like data from? This application will go to which API to get data? Now, right now, there are five APIs already enabled by default. Our application can query these APIs right now. I need to go to Google Plus API to get the user data. So I'll go to Google Plus API and say, please enable this API for my application. That's enabled. Um, now, if I make this request, is it running? Yeah, so I make a GET request to the Google Plus API sending in just the access token. Now, there are several ways you can send the access token. You can send it as a query string parameter, or you can send it in a POST request as a part of the body, or the OAuth framework also defines a bearer authentication scheme, which is basically a basic authentication scheme, which if you know HTTP, you probably know of. Uh, it's a base 64 encoded string that you send in an HTTP authorization header. And that's what I'm doing here. And then I get a response or an error. And that's basically the data that I got. And I'm just deserializing that JSON into an object and then also showing that string basically. Okay. And if I run this with debug points, I don't have the time to right now, but I'll just put one, okay, one breakpoint here. Go here, 
and says, Great Indian Developer Summit 2015 would like to <laughs> know that this, this, this about you. And I say, accept. And then I get information about, we get an authorization code. That's the authorization code. And then I'll just run the rest of it. That's my information. You can get anything you want from Google. Let's quickly go to the Facebook app and see how it's done there. I'll close this. Same thing for Facebook. I registered the app with Facebook. I'll quickly go and copy these. I'll go to Facebook and say, in fact, first let me copy this client secret here and the client ID here. and the redirect URL into the Facebook callback. I'll go to settings, advanced, and valid OAuth redirect URIs, and I'll copy and paste my URL, and I'll save it. That's it. Now, if I run this code, the first thing is, I again, I construct this URL. Now, for the Facebook example, I'm using a library that's written by someone else. It's, it's called Facebook. All you need to do is go to Package Manager and say install package Facebook. Now, I'm not going to do that. I've already done that here. That gives you a single DLL called Facebook, this one. And the good thing about this is to get the first URI, you call a function, you first create a class called Facebook client, you create an object of this class, and then you say, get login URL. And it gives you the login URL of the resource server. And then to that, I attach these parameters as a get request. The, we've already gone through this, client ID, redirect URI, the scope, and the response type. We get back, we present this to the user, uh, we get back over here an authorization code in the request. Then Facebook is lenient about what kind of request I can make. I can make a get or post request. So I again new up a client. I send the rest of the data, client ID secret, and ask for, for at this URL, I, I provide these parameters and ask for an access token. It gives me back an object, a JSON object, which has an access token. And I set that access token on the client because I'm going to reuse that client to make more requests and the client should be aware of the access token. And next, I use the same client to make a request to the resource server. That's the URL of the resource server with the fields I want. I want this, this, this about this person. And that's it. Basically, I get this information here. And I'm also going to make a post on behalf of this user. I'm attending a one hour talk, blah, 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 blah. Let's do this. Let's actually run this code. You see this? See the URI? Facebook slash dialogue slash OAuth. And then the query string parameters, which include client ID, redirect URI, etc. I click this. And it asks me, I'm already logged into Facebook, so it asks me, this guy will receive the following about you. I say, okay. It says he's asking for too much, submit this application for a review. But uh, this is in debug mode, so I can, I can. Now it says, it will also like to post on your behalf, and I'll say, make it public. And just to show you, we've got an authorization code. We've got an authorization code. We send that to get an access token. That's the access token. And then we get the user info. And I'm basically going to run this application anyways.
and that's my email address it pulled out and my name and it also made a post on my behalf let's go and see if that post has been made yes it just made that post just now right so that's basically how you do oauth now before i wrap up we've seen both these demos you might ask me okay this is all fine what's in it for me on my day job i just write grunt code like when do i use this now think of the scenarios there's that's a plugin called lightroom for photoshop it pulls out data from users flickr photos edits them and saves them back to his flickr account so if you have any domain that already implements oauth as a resource server you could and you're writing an application in that domain you could leverage or harness the the oauth server implementation in that domain so if you're making an edit, an image editing software for instance you can use flickr as a store to get data and and or you could uh, whatever your application be you could store business data in a users google drive or uh, dropbox all these are oauth server implementations or if nothing else you could use it for advertising and marketing you sell you, you want to sell something you can post on users facebook uh, walls whatever whenever they do something with your application so that everybody else gets to know so it's a nice marketing uh, thing oauth has several limitations i'm not going to go into them right now we are short of time uh when i started learning oauth about a year ago i spent two months reading some articles and i thought i knew oauth and i wrote a whole library in dotnet it's a very comprehensive library to know, to do oauth uh but then when i was preparing for the stock i spent another three months rereading everything and the oauth specs and the more i read the lesser i knew and i got to know that i don't know any oauth right now it's so confusing so i would i would request you not to read any specs they're all in contradiction to each other there's a huge fight going on going on in the oauth group itself the main editor left oauth after 1a and there's a whole drama going on in the oauth community just read just read the the only spec you need to read is 6749 which is the oauth 2.0 framework rfc and then read whatever implementation you want to actually write a client for read their documentation that's enough don't read anything else they will only screw with your head and you will actually lose or unlearn stuff um uh, that said in the final word i am an independent consultant and i am looking for work so if you have any clients or companies that would like to hire me uh i would be very grateful <laughs> <laughs> and that's my email address if you need to get in touch with me thank you i, I will take one question yes Yes. Very good. Yes. Why does it have to be so secure? Yeah. Yes. No. Yes. Welcome to the internet. Anyone can sniff anything in between, and I can take your request, steal your client secret, and send my. This is a, this is a very common loophole in law. I can put my own redirect URI so that I get the authorization code in my thing. I do my bad stuff. I send him back. I send uh, the same good authorization code back to the user, and he doesn't know. Uh, I I recorded this with four or five cameras, whatever. Uh, if it all turns out well and the audio turns out well, I'm going to put the whole of this on YouTube, so you can actually jog on YouTube.